Wagner Group warlord Yevgeny Prigozhin is believed to be dead. His private jet crashed from the skies north of Moscow last night, just 60 days after he led a failed mutiny. Now, of course, there's fears his mercenaries could seek their own revenge. Today, Putin absurdly sent condolences to the man he suspected of blowing out of the sky. Ukraine and the West tend to cheer chaos in the Kremlin, but history teaches, of course, that the demise of strong men is usually followed by a period of even greater peril. Russia is a country of 26 languages, 100 ethnic groups and 11 time zones spanning half of our planet. Frankly, it's held together by propaganda about a common enemy and by force. And for the past 24 years, that force has been Vladimir Putin. Now we ask, should the world fear what would happen without him? It's the big question. Joining me first up, former Russian MP Sergei Markov. We also have security expert Professor Anthony Glees. Gentlemen, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, can I start with you, Sergei? And we'd like to include everybody tonight. Bear that in mind. That clip of Putin uh, offering his condolences uh, to the Wagner warlord. Um, have, you, have you seen this? Have a, have a watch of this, if you would, my friend, please. I knew Prigozhin for a very long time. Since the early 1990s, he was a man with a complex destiny and he made serious mistakes in life. He achieved the results he needed both for himself and, when I asked him, for the common cause, as in these last months. He was a talented person, a talented businessman. Sergey, that is the most absurd, insincere thing I've ever heard in the history of my life. Surely you would agree. It's just because you lost the connection with reality. Connection with reality, uh, reality is saying that all terrorist attacks have been organized by Ukrainian authorities. Vladimir Zelensky was personal enemy of Evgeny Prigozhin because Zelensky claimed Bakhmut as a um, um, symbol of um, strong spirit of Ukrainian uh, nation. But uh, uh, Evgeny Prigozhin crashed Ukrainian army and took control of the Bakhmut in the uh, big battle during uh, a few months. Sergey, my sure problem with that, Sergey, Sergey, my problem with that, we've spoken before and you never, you never listen. My problem with that is, if you are, if, are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? Why you don't, why you don't shut, why you shut me up? Why you don't want a lawyer to say, Zelensky can repeat. Give I know you don't order. understand democracy in order. Russia, personal but both order. people are supposed to be able to talk, my friend. I'm asking you this. Are you literally that indoctrinated that you believe that a man... That, uh, Putin shot that plane down and appearing on it. Anthony Gleeson, help me out. It's the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen. Would you not agree, sir? Oh, ab ab absolutely. And the, the British people are many things, but they're absolutely not stupid. They know a liar when they see one. They know a coward when they see one. They know a war criminal when they see one. We've got a doughty history of going after people like Vladimir Putin. And to watch him smirk uh, and think that he's pulled a fast one will convince nobody in this country, and I think will convince nobody in Europe. Of course he shot Prigozhin down. At the same time, as we just heard in our very interesting clip, Putin is too afraid to actually damn him. People will be reminded of, of Brutus's speech with the death of Julius Caesar. It comes to bury uh, praise Caesar, not to, to bury him. Actually, Putin does not dare say, I did it. We know he did it. Why Prigozhin went off in this plane uh, with his closest advisors, that remains a mystery. But ever since uh, the rebellion raised by Prigozhin, we have known that either Putin was a dead man walking or Prigozhin was a dead man walking, and very probably both. So we're not convinced by this. And President Putin needs actually to just clear off because nobody thinks that what he is saying is true. He's killed repeatedly. He kills traitors. He come to Britain to kill people he thinks are traitors. Anthony, can I, Anthony, can, I, can, I ask, Anthony can I ask you a question? And, 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 and Sergey, your response in a tick as well, please. Um, if we talk about 
Putin's mindset. And we imagine that when Prigozhin uh, stood up against him and started that march to Moscow, that really was the first time in 24 years that there had been dissent. What would Putin's mindset be right now? Is it... Are we looking at the beginning, the slow beginning of the end, or does this killing, and let's label it a killing, because undoubtedly it was, does that cement his, his, his authority once again over the Russian people? Firstly, Anthony. No, it's a sign of weakness. Yes, he, he may shore up his position in the short term, but nobody should be in any doubt at all that things are going badly for Putin. He's not winning in Ukraine, and he's got to win in order to win. The Ukrainians have simply not got to lose in order to win. He didn't dare go to Africa to speak to the BRICS nation. He delivered this ridiculous talk to them, saying that Russia would lead the anti-colonialist fight against the West. Uh, if the African leaders were stupid enough to believe him, I feel very sorry. But there can be no bigger colonialist in the world today than Vladimir Putin. He's in big trouble. He needed Let Prigozhin. Okay. He needed Prigozhin. Okay. That's okay. the point. And now he's had to kill him. Let me so let me bring Sergei back. Weaker, not S stronger. Sergei won't want to acknowledge this, but let's say that this is the beginning of the end of Vladimir Putin. What would happen next, Sergei? What would happen to Russia? What would the Kremlin do? What does this say for Russian philosophy right now? First of all, forget about Vladimir Putin replacement until war against Russia continues. United States, Great Britain, possibly to say Small Britain, uh, and another NATO country conducting hybrid war using the Ukrainian proxy army uh, against Russia. When this war continues, Russians will not replace Vladimir Putin. If your war against Russia will continue 20 years, Putin will uh, keep uh, his presidency additionally uh, 20 years. He's very sporty, medicine is very good, so uh, he can live until uh, 100 years. Uh, but if your war against Russia finished, Putin, I think, will see one a year, and then he will uh, give the power not just himself, but whole generation of these, uh, you know, small uh, 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 baby boomers uh, will be replaced in Russia by new generation, which main goal will be not to protect Russia from uh, aggression of United States and Britain, but to modernize country, to develop Russia, and so on. It means that your war is giving uh, to, Paul, uh, to Putin the additionally yes and yes uh, duty uh, to be uh, the president. Sergey, um, one final question. Uh, we know where your loyalties stand, and I understand that this is about both sides of the argument. I suspect even you, my friend, would say to any, uh, you know, up-and-coming warlord not to go on a private plane across Russia. That would be good advice, Sergey Markov, yeah? Uh, you know, uh, Wagner Group, uh, and Prigozhin, by the way, was a reader of my Telegram channel. Sometimes even give me uh, his responses to some of my yeah. uh, analysis. And uh, Wagner will play a very important role in the crisis period. He allow, uh, he give uh, the time to Russian army to build this defensive uh, line. And uh, now Russian army more more. Uh, Sergey Markov, uh, as ever, an absolute pleasure. You blow my mind. I have to say, Anthony Gleason, thank you very much indeed. Unbelievable.